Hello Freedom Seekers, Jeremy Chambers, Independence Acres Homestead. Out here today by the pond to talk about something that's pretty important for homesteading and definitely important if you are looking to become just a little bit more independent. Today's video is going to be all about foraging, but also a little bit about an app that I use in order to help me identify some of the plants it is that I'm looking for or looking at. Because sometimes we see things that look like they might be edible, but we're wondering, are they really? And this app is going to be a good starting point just to get you an idea as to whether or not this is a place to look for food. And then from there you can start doing research to figure out and get confirmation as to whether or not this is food. So today we're starting out by the pond. It is early July and it is time for the wild black raspberries to start blooming. So here we are out in front of uh, one of the wild black raspberry patches by the pond in order to just show you guys what it is we're looking for and some of the wild food sources that we have on our property. So before we go any further, I just wanna make sure that you guys fully understand there's only one person responsible for making sure that what you're about to eat is edible and that's you. No advice on the internet, no advice on videos, should be your 100% confirmation that something is edible. Do your research, find out for sure. This is just for entertainment purposes only. Oh man, those are good. So over the last year, we have identified over a half dozen edible berries that are on our property. The first is being those wild blackberries, well, wild black raspberries. Then we actually have wild blackberries. There's a difference. Uh, there is the river bank grapevine, I think I'm calling that right, but it's a, a wild grapevine and the grapes are 100% edible. Uh, and then we have found, uh, there's a mulberry tree back over here by the pond. And then further into the woods, we have found a black cherry tree and what else did we find? So yeah, that's a uh, black raspberry, blackberry, riverbank grape, mulberry, black cherry. What's the last one? Oh, that's right. The autumn olive. That's the sixth one. The autumn olive. Uh, autumn olive. Let me be very clear on that one. And uh, this has been a it's been kind of nice because if you look at how these different berries ripen, if we really pay attention and we are really careful to catch them as they ripen, we can have ripe fruit to eat from June through almost August, even later, September, October. So the, the, we can get uh, the mulberries early June, I'm sorry, late June, mulberries late June, uh, the black raspberries start early July through the middle of July, blackberries are mid to end of July, the uh, cherry tree, the black cherry tree uh, will be producing between uh, end of July into August, and then the uh, autumn olive is through August into the autumn. So. It's important to be able to identify these plants. And let me show you guys exactly what we're using to get a primary identification, and then we can do some more research from there. So I came back a little further in the woods in order to find our blackberry bushes. The blackberry is gonna be uh, longer in length and not as domed like a raspberry is, um, but, the easiest way that we have found to identify these is actually using an app on our phone. And it is the app called Picture This. Just so everybody knows, this is not a sponsored video in any way. And also, just so everybody knows, I'm being eaten alive by mosquitoes right now. So um, you might hear a lot of oohs and owls. That's just, uh, unfortunately, the uh, price we pay for living in southeastern Michigan at this time of year. All right, so like I said, the app we use is Picture This. This is not sponsored by Picture This in any way. Uh, so, you know, I'm not getting any money for, uh, for this. Uh, Picture This does try to get you to pay for the app. However, it is a free app. So 
basically what this app does is you take a picture of the plant and it searches its database, tries to match it as closely as possible, and uh, give you a approximate identification of what this plant is. So for example, I'm standing here in front of this bush. So this is the, uh, the home page of the app here. You know, pretty simple. We're gonna click this button right here, right? And that's gonna access my camera. I'll take a picture of this bush, and you uh, take a picture of the bush. You wanna get the flowers, the greenery, the fruit if it has the fruit, get as much of the plant in focus, uh, and um, you know, much identifiable features in the picture as possible. We will click a picture of it. You'll see it's identifying, searching, searching. Now it gives us identification right there. It is an Allegheny Blackberry. Such a simple app to use. Um, now you're gonna take this information, what you think it is, and then go from there and really do some research to find out is this really what it is and is it actually edible. So we using this app, like I said, we've been able to identify the blackberries, the black raspberries, um, the autumn olive, uh, the black cherry tree that's a little further back up by our shooting range, uh, along with the riverbank grape. Now, this app also tells you how to care for the plants. It will teach you, um, oh, sorry, I got caught on a bush there. Uh, it could also show you uh, some diseases that are bothering the plant using the picture, a basic diagnosis, but it's a, it's a pretty good app. Um, and we try, oh, oh, ah, ah. all right, walking through the brambles there. We try not to depend too much on technology, but it's a good start for learning the, the basics of how to identify the plants. And this is also gonna be good for all the trees and plants on your property. We're able to use it to identify what type of grass we have in our pasture for the sheep. Uh, we've been able to use it to identify the trees on our property because even though we have an idea that it's a birch tree, it doesn't exactly, you know, we're able to nail it down. And when it comes time for tapping maple trees, we can use it to identify maple trees. So there's so much that uh, you can do with this app, but most importantly, it's just about building knowledge. And knowledge is power. The easiest way to become independent of the systems that uh, are so fragile nowadays is to have knowledge. Build your library with books, Fill your phone with apps and information to help you in the times when you're gonna need it. Um, just learn as much as you possibly can. That's it, that's what this video is all about. It's just about taking the time to educate yourself a little bit more about what is on your property. If you don't have property that you, you know, own that you can go out and do this on, head out into you know, local parks, whether it's a community park, a state park, whatever, so that you can be familiar with the wild food resources that are in your area. So we've discovered that on our property, a lot of our wild edibles are actually found cohabiting spaces. For example, back in those blackberry bushes, that's where we also found the wild cherry tree. Um, this tree right here, uh, based upon its leaf and bark and everything, I know this is an autumn olive tree, uh, but cohabiting this space is also a uh, riverbank grapevine. And you can see we've already got some grapes growing here. Now these aren't the most magnificent grapes and they're not huge and plump and you know, like the commercially grown grapes that you get at the grocery store, but they are a grape, one that is good for making jellies, wines, jams, um, you know, any processed, you know, grape product you can make with these riverbank grapes. and. Um, but you have to be careful because there is a look-alike that is poisonous. So this is why you have to remember the only person responsible for your health and safety when it comes to eating wild edibles is you. If you're unsure, don't eat it. I know I keep saying it, but it's something I have to do because I don't want anybody to think that this is, you know, 100% advice and I'm 100% right. I've been known to be wrong. I'm not necessarily an expert. This is just stuff that I have you know, learned, and this isn't about me showing you what's edible. This is about me encouraging you to go out and find what's edible in your area. So when it comes uh, to harvesting wild edibles, there's only two things that you have to be concerned about. The first is 
time, you know, is it the right time to be harvesting? And number two is what is the, um, the other animal load in the area that's also dependent upon those foods? Because uh, if you wait too long, you're always gonna be fighting the birds for every wild berry in your area. We really appreciate you joining us for this journey. We hope that you found it educational, entertaining, inspiring, encouraging, any of those things. And thanks for watching. Until next time, God bless.